Hey everybody, Dr. Ray, and today we are talking about ID software for 2022. What software instructional designer is gonna be using this year? What should you know if you wanna be in ID or you're like, I gotta catch up to the latest tech, what do you need to know? I break this down into tiers, so I make it super easy. So obviously tier one is the, if you're like, I only have time for one or two pieces of software, learn tier one first. Then go down to tier two, then tier three. So if you wanna be a really well-rounded ID, get to know all of it. I'm basing this off of my experience with my consulting firm that I have, basing this on the experience of all the companies I talk to for my master's program, and the experience of what we teach in my master's program, and I see my students getting jobs in and have to know. All right, so this is the software you need to know 2022. And obviously, if a new piece of software is released tomorrow, it's not gonna be on my list. So don't comment like, oh, you should have known this two months before it was released. That's impossible. Um, if I could tell time, I would be a billionaire from investing in the stock market, so I cannot do that. <laughs> All right, you ready for my list? Okay, tier one, Articulate Storyline, Adobe Captivate. Tier one, Articulate Storyline, Adobe Captivate. If you are gonna learn one or two pieces of software, boom, those are the two you gotta learn. Nearly, uh, so such a high, large percentage of IDs those are the two pieces of software they're using a significant amount of the time. So if you're going to le learn software, you got to know both of those two. That's tier one, articulate, captivate. People will, will argue to the death about, I mean, literally, like we want to like put them in like a du duel, <laughs> like to argue which is better, like give them each swords and say which one's better. Look, just learn both of them. They're both very similar in a lot of ways. Um, in my opinion, they're both very limited, but that's because I have a background as a programmer. Um, learn both of them. They're both very similar, both also very easy to learn. So the learning curve on each of them is pretty simple. They each give a free 30-day trial. You can learn the pieces of software in that time. Learn both of those, tier one. All right, you ready for tier two? Here we go. Tier two has some more, more pieces of software. The first piece of software on tier two is probably what I would say is the most important. That's Articulate Rise. We are using, I've used Articulate Rise so much more in the last year from, from several different companies have requested it or we've shown it to them and it's worked beautifully. Articulate Rise would be the first tier two piece of software I would learn. Next, and this one is a, it's a pretty newer one. Well, it's not a new piece of software. It's a newer one in popularity and that's Vion. And I believe it used to be Go Animate. Maybe that's what it was. But anyway, it's Vion now. A lots and lots of requests for Vion, especially once we show it to clients, they just love it. Lots of Vion use. I had one client request like 50 to 60 some just Vion videos. So lots of Vion use. Again, pretty easy to learn. So that's my next one in tier two that I would learn. And then I've got some more. We've got Adobe Photoshop. A, a, seriously a must have. We use Photoshop for so many different things. Even when we're like pulling images off something, we've always got to shrink it down. We've got to cut it. We've got to change colors. You got to know Photoshop to do all that stuff. Now, whenever you're working with a raster based image, got to know Photoshop. So we gotta, we've got to know Photoshop. Um, LMS, how to use an LMS. Um, I know it's not like a specific piece of software like an LMS because there's many different ones, but you got to know how to use one, how to administrate it and set it up for a client. You've got to know how to do that practice with it. Especially one thing you've got to know with the LMS is how do Articulate and Captivate SCORM files function on different LMSs. You really got to know how they function because we get a lot of questions about like, from clients who are very particular. They're like, well, how is gonna, how is SCORM gonna record my articulate multiple choice questions? You gotta be able to answer that stuff on the fly to clients, like questions like that. They will ask me that. Like in our first meeting, I'm like, whoa, they really have done some research. They know a lot of stuff. So they will ask you questions like that. So know that. All right, next thing, some kind of sound editor, like Adobe Audition or Audacity, which is free. You gotta know how to edit sound. We do a lot of narration, lots of narration, lots of, even when we're using like a text to voice piece of software, a lot of times we gotta do edits, basic edits in them. Know how to, it's very easy to edit sounds, but you gotta know how to do it. You gotta have a piece of software, your go-to software, so you can do it for your training. All right, and the final thing in my tier two list, Camtasia. We use Camtasia a lot, a lot for demos, a lot for showing things to clients. We, you can also use it as a lower end video editor. Um, great piece of software. I love Camtasia. Use it all the time. I'm actually using it to record this video right now. So Camtasia would be my next thing. So that's my tier two list. All right. 
And I, I really think like to be a well-rounded ID, you need to know everything in tier two. I think it, to make yourself competitive, you need to know everything in tier two that I just mentioned. All right, tier three. Tier three is more like, hey, these are bonuses. Like if you, I personally like to see an ID with these three, with all the tier three software. Um, I think it makes you stand out. These are like software pieces that are bonus, can stand out. And sometimes you get to a company and these are what they're using. So I, I think to be well-rounded, you need to know at least some or most of these tier three lists. But again, these aren't like, these aren't your priorities. These are like bonuses. These are add-ons. I know plenty of IDs that do not know these at all. Um, some IDs probably have never even heard of some of the ones I'm going to mention. And then, um, you know, there are IDs out there that know all of them. All right. Tier three list. First one, Adobe Illustrator creates vector images. It's great for like logos and stuff. We don't get a lot of companies that are like, you need to create our logo for us. They usually all have that we hired a graphic artist, but it's a nice piece of software to even be able to talk about to a client. Like this is when you use Illustrator versus Photoshop. Like those kind of things are very nice to be able to just spout off in a meeting to get a client. Um, Adobe InDesign, again, this is a piece of software we used to use all the time where we're doing a lot of like instructor-led training, but with we're not doing a lot of document creation right now. Um, but Adobe InDesign is very important for all kinds of, to create your documents. So it's a pretty nice piece of software to use. Also really easy to learn. So it's kind of worth just having in there. Um, next thing, Adobe Premiere. This is for like advanced video editing. It does everything Camtasia can't. I think most IDs can probably just get away with Camtasia and don't need to know like Final Cut or Premiere, but it's really nice to use it. I have done a lot of video editing. We actually worked with a client about a year ago today, like a year ago, it was like last January, February time, that was creating a lot of videos and we had to do a lot of video editing. I probably could have got away with most of it in Camtasia, but not all of it. So you really should have some experience with Premiere. It's kind of complicated when you first, I feel like it's complicated for new people when they first get into it, especially if they've never worked with like a timeline, um, like a video editor timeline before. So it can be a little daunting at first. There's a, so many different options, but it's worth knowing some of the basics of Premiere. Um, next thing, and these two kind of go together, actually the next three things kind of go together. And that's Dreamweaver. Knowing the basics of web design, like just the basics of Dreamweaver is pretty important. Um, you know, I like that someone can at least like open up a web page in Dreamweaver or some other web editor. Look at the HTML because the next thing on my list is HTML and CSS. Just to be able to like look at a page and tell me what someone's using to, to be able to understand what's going on, especially if a client's like I'm developing web stuff and they want like SEO and stuff like that. It's really important to understand HTML and CSS are really basic, easy pieces of, you know, they're not even, I don't even consider them programming languages. They're just web languages. So, you know, it's super easy to know both of them and it's good. So I wouldn't like, you know, when we start getting other programming like JavaScript and stuff. I don't think you need to know that. I think that's outside the scope of what ID is expected to do. But I think HTML and CSS are nice bonuses. You should at least know what the, what the languages do and how they function and how they affect the web. Especially because remember, everything you put out in Articulate or Captivate um, or Rise is HTML5. Like they're HTML files. You need to kind of be able to go in. I've actually had to go in to captivate files before into the HTML files and make some changes. So, you know, just know it, or even like the JavaScript, I guess I went into JavaScript too, but you got to know how to make some of those programming changes sometimes when the software is not functioning correctly. And another uh, thing within HTML and CSS, I would like, I think that is a nice thing to know is like how to install and set up WordPress. Like we do have some smaller clients that want us to create a web page for them and installing like installing WordPress on their database using like a plugin like Elementor really great to be able to just explain the process and do that for a client and help them with it it's a nice bonus and it also starts to tell me like you're a tech person like if i'm hiring you to be like an e-learning developer like i kind of want you to be a tech person um okay next thing and remember this tier three list i'm i'm stretching a little bit i don't expect all ids to know this stuff next thing would be basics of database design like what is a database why do you why do i recommend or not recommend a database to a client most clients are using lms's so this isn't something you need to know but just understanding like what what is happening in the background what the database really does maybe some basic like how to create a database in excel 
basic SQL commands. And my final thing would be OBS software. And OBS is used for streaming, but it can do a lot of the things like Camtasia can do. And we've actually had to use this piece of software for some workarounds, like when my, some, oh, cause OBS is free. It's a piece of shareware. Um, so like my clients that didn't have Camtasia, we were able to mimic some of the things that Camtasia did in OBS, like screen recording and stuff when they didn't have other software and it actually worked out really well. It's an easy piece of software to use and it's free. So it's nice to understand it's made for streaming, like streaming video games. So it's something I use all the time, being able to explain that to my clients. And it's a hugely popular pop popular piece of software. <laughs> so um, it's kind of nice to have. So I'd say that tier three list is bonus. Not something you need to know. If you're intimidated by it, don't worry about it. You really focus on tier, please focus on tier one then focus on tier two. Th tier three, pick a couple things or pick one thing that, you know, you want to, hey, I want to round myself out. I wanted, I love the tech. I want to know what I should learn next. That's like the tier three list there. Um, so I hope you enjoyed, but that's the software we're using right now in the beginning of 2022. And I think it's what we're going to be using for the rest of the year. Again, unless some like new thing comes out. And look, there are all, a bunch of alternative pieces of software out there that I did not mention, like alternatives to Articulate and Captivate, art, uh, alternatives to Rise. But these are the big pieces of software clients are requesting. These are the pieces of software I'm seeing, you know, my students getting out and having jobs in. These are the, these are the pieces of software we're using at my company right now. And there's some other stuff I didn't mention. Not that it's bad or anything. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing right now. All right, y'all. Hope you enjoyed. Later.